Hey guys, Rasma here with Team Temple Storm, and I'm back again. Oh my god. Back again with uh, intermediate skill level tips for arena drafting. And uh, we're going to cover quite a few topics here, actually. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, the first one is stat allocation synergy. What the hell is that? Stat allocation synergy. This sounds like something I just made up, right? Uh, it actually is something I just made up, uh, but it is uh, something that actually exists. Uh, so by stat allocation synergy, I mean uh, certain minions uh, that have a certain stat allocation, right? Uh, let's say two threes have synergies with uh, like different stat allocation sets from different uh, from different mana sets, like three sets and four sets and one sets. So, uh, very easy example. Um, your one cost two ones are supported very well by two mana two threes, much better than they are by two mana three twos. Uh, the reason for this is, you know, the only thing that denies you tempo and actually tries uh, when the thing that gets uh, your tempo upset, right, is when your opponent plays a two three up against your two one. Then all of a sudden, you trying to get a temp get tempo by denying your opponent's two mana three two. Um, is, you know, all of a sudden you're losing the card for free and you're not removing anything from your opponent's board. So, uh, in that case, if you have a 2-mana two 2-3 two, to back it up, all of a sudden you're back in you're back in charge where, you know, now they have the 2-1 again after their 2-3 kills your 2-1, and you have the 2-3 to kill their 2-1. You see how this is a chain reaction? Um, and the same thing goes uh, with this connection with the 1-mana one, one 2-1s and 2-mana two 2-3s. Uh, you have the same connection with two mana two threes and three drops like Argent Horse Rider, for example, which supports it very well. Uh, if the two mana two three needs to trade up again with the three drop, which many three drops like uh, uh, Ogre Brute or Spider Tank and uh, Scarlet Crusader are traded into with the two mana two three or two mana two one after killing, you know, after having that synergy with the two one and turning into your opponent's two three two three. Uh, we can go very deep here. Uh, can once again trade uh, after getting value on your opponent's two drop. Can trade again uh, into a three drop, or you can just run the Argent Horse Rider in with the two three um, to protect it uh, and like finish off the two three. Or if their opponent plays a three two, you can finish it off with the Argent Horse Rider. Things are that are very sticky are very good. Uh, high health and sticky is what we're looking for to support two mana two threes. Uh, three mana two fours support them very well. Uh, it takes an extra turn, but if it's like a spider tank or a scarlet crusader or a harvest golem, uh, it does end up trading very well if you do have the uh, um, less aggressive three drops. So, um, so as opposed to something like uh, three mana four two, uh, three mana four two jungle panther, which can't um, can't retrieve the lost value. If your two mana two three is stuck on your opponent's two mana uh, two three or two mana uh, three two, your jungle panther can't support it very well. And so you're probably asking, oh, it looks like two mana two threes are pretty important. That is not actually the case, uh, not completely the case. Uh, although harvest golem, it seems like it would support everything. Um, it does support two threes a lot better, but two mana three twos do have their place. Um, let's say, for example, you're drafting and you end up with, you know, Injured Blade Master. You have Injured Blade Master. You have uh, some other dudes. You have Injured Blade Master. You have Jungle Panther. You have Master of Ceremonies. I know this is a very extreme example. You have Raging Morgan. A lot of like low health three drops that trade down. This is where two two mana three twos come into play. Two mana three twos are very good at uh, trading with other two drops, right? Because it has the aggressive stance, um, it trades with two threes and three twos. So it's protecting your three drop so that the three drop, which also is an aggressive stance, the four threes and three threes and whatnot, uh, can have a chance at trading up or trading evenly with your opponent's three uh, three drop. So you kind of have that kind of synergy, and this goes on. Uh, even into like four drops, if you have an aggressive stance three drop like a raging worgen or a four two or a four three, then you're supported very well by, you guessed it, four mana taunts. Uh, Arcane nullifier, Senge, and heckler work really well um, to protect them. And also, uh, um, 
let's see, like a lower health 4 drops, or sorry, higher health 4 drops with lower attack, uh, things like uh, uh, things like Gnomish Inventor are a little bit better, Frigid Snowballed are a little bit better if your 2 and 3s are in aggressive stance, and things like uh, Oasis Snapjaw are a little bit better, because all you, you don't need that much damage at that point since your uh, opening plays provide that much uh, more damage, and your 3 drop uh, supposedly should be alive, or you should have another 2 drop, um, maybe you'll, you play to, uh, 2 drop on 2 and 2 drop on 3 because you missed your curve, but still, that's still enough damage to uh, support the Oasis Snapjaw to kill a Yeti, right? Uh, even if it's like a Blood Fen. So, you want to keep that in mind. And this is more if you like start to see a pattern in your in your draft and you just end up with, you know, turn, uh, pick 10 and you have like 3, 2 mana 3 twos already, you're like, oh, okay, I guess now our 3 drop should be more aggressive. Or if you have like uh, like, like four, three mana two fours. You're like, hey, my two drops should be two threes now, so that the two fours actually can support something in the two threes. So that's what I mean by stat allocation synergy. Uh, you want to make sure that your the stats on your minions actually work well together. The next one I want to get into is uh, you want to take a good look at your draft, and this is more towards like the later half of your drafting. Uh, does your deck look really wimpy in the early game? Then you want to make sure that your mid-game cards uh, can stabilize. So if one part of your deck is weak, you want to make up for it um, in, at another point in your deck, uh, which you probably have cards in, right? Because if you don't have cards here, you got to have some cards somewhere around here. So what should your 4 drops look like if your mid-game cards are weak? And we talked a little bit about this on the previous video, and I'm, and I didn't, I'm not going to go over like everything, because uh, I expect... You know, if you're watching this video, you should know most card values and like what's good and what's not good. But uh, hopefully, this you know could be a little bit more uh, in depth, in depth, since uh, this video should be uh, should be for intermediate players. So if we have a weak early game, what I'm looking for is four mana five health minions. This is a huge deal. I'll even take a four mana two five over a four mana five four. I think that's a huge deal because it helps you stabilize. So if your early game is that weak. Um, then you're very susceptible to leaving your opponent with like a 1-drop and a 2-drop uh, by the time you hit your turn 4 or like a 2-drop and a 3-drop or a 3-drop and a 1-drop and a, you know there's a, very, a lot of different combinations in which you know Yeti is more likely to stabilize or like a um, whereas like a Valley Teacher or like any 3-5 is more likely to stabilize you uh, than something like an Ancient Brewmaster or an Orgrim Magi so you want to keep your eye open for that weak Weak uh, uh, early game means you want uh, stabilizing four drops in the mid game, um, and also a big point is you know maybe not maybe they don't even have like a one drop and a two drop you know maybe Rasmus is just making this kind of stuff up to scare us, but uh, you want to think about it in this way where you know the five health amount is a break point a huge break point in Hearthstone, and let me explain why there are a lot of cards that can do four damage and there's also a lot of minions that have five health. Uh, and this is a huge deal. This is why you see the pink classes always rise to the top uh, of Arena. This is why Rogue and Mage and Druid are consistently very strong classes because they can um, use that uh, very often, uh, very frequent four damage with the, against very frequent five health on minions. And uh, if we can help it when we're not playing against those classes, or even when you are playing against those classes, you still get the edge because they start to use their two mana to ping it. But uh, you know, you gotta play around things like Shadow Bolt, True Silver, Flame Cannon, Bomb Lobber, Eviscerate, everything does 4 damage, Flame Strike, every single thing does Flame 4 damage, I promise you. Despite, trust me, everything does 4 damage. And so, you know, that's why you value the 3 fives a little bit more. You know, just get, it just stays alive, and once again, if you have a weak early game, the last thing you need is for your 4 drop to be destroyed by some cheap spell and for you to keep falling behind in the mid game. Because at that point, your late game, unless you have a million blizzards, uh, if you have a, unless you have like a crazy comeback, like constructed comeback combo, I don't see you winning that game. So just make sure, you know, if you do have a weak mid game, four mana three five. That does not mean if you have a strong early game, you should pick four mana five fours. So I would still prefer four fives and three fives over five fours. And we went over this um, because of that break point. But I think it's a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more acceptable. It's a little bit more acceptable if you do have a very powerful, powerful or early game 
uh, in the same way that you know three twos synergize really well with with three threes and four twos because the two drop uh, two mana three two trades and protects by trading uh, the four mana four two or three mana four two because of the three mana four two's low health um, because it trades in aggressive stance. Uh, the three drop is protected in the same way. If you do have a very powerful early game, uh, your four drop, even though it has four health, will be a little bit more protected, so it's a little bit more acceptable. Oh, that's difficult to say. Second topic I want to get to is uh, knowing whether you're playing like a momentum class or a reactive class. So let's see. Let's look at the different classes here. And different classes have tendencies. Um, and some classes will almost always be uh, momentum based and some classes will always be reactive based but uh, let's go over real quick about what I mean by momentum and reactive momentum classes are classes that need initiative and need to be ahead on board uh, at the start usually to even have a chance uh, you'll see momentum classes usually be classes like uh, Paladin is a very obvious one without Paladin, Paladin having the board their comeback mechanisms are very weak you know um, they're not. Uh, it's very easy to play around true silver and consecration and whatnot. So usually they want to be ahead on board so they can use the buffs, uh, buffs to get ahead and whatnot. Very big momentum class. Same with priest. Um, priest needs to be ahead on board, but at the same time, priest does have a little bit more spells in their arsenal, although they're a little bit weak. Um, so you know, they can be reactive. It depends on how many like uh, like comeback mechanisms you have. But a uh, very obvious, uh, another very obvious momentum class, Warlock. You have a very early curve uh, with uh, you know Wrathgars and Flame Imps and Blood Imps, and you know your cards are your class cards are very cheap, so that you can have the board early, and that's how you get your powerful Lumings active, and you know, um, just that's just how the class is meant to be played. Um, Let's see, a very obvious, another very obvious uh, momentum class is Hunter. Generally, you want to curve lower as Hunter uh, because your win condition, unlike every other class, is face damage. Uh, to do this, you generally need to be able to build a substantial amount of tempo on the board and convert that into damage later on. So to build that substantial amount of tempo on the board, you at some point needed to have, uh, needed to have gotten the, uh, the uh, momentum early on or you know some kind of board control early on that's why we call it a momentum class uh, very obvious reactive classes uh, priest again actually is also uh, reactive because once again depending on how many spells you have and because priest generally you can't grab the board very well anyways is can be considered a uh, reactive class it works it works in both ways I know I sound like an idiot saying that it is a reactive class and a momentum class as well, but it, it can be, okay? Um, Mage, Druid, Warrior are um, very reactive. Uh, so as Mage and Druid and Warrior, you get a lot of removal. Warriors get a lot of weapons. You tend to just play and just wait for your opponent to play minion. You use your weapon to smack it down. Done. You got value, and that gets you tempo. Uh, mages, they bait you into their flame, stri flame strikes or flame cannons. Um, they use fireballs on things that cost marginally uh, more to play and get small tempo uh, advantages in the late game in that way. Uh, druids in the same way. Uh, they play reactively. They try to, try to survive until the late game to play their big things, but they have like Swipe, Starfires, uh, star, uh, sorry, not Starfire, Starfalls. Swipe Starfalls, Wraths, Claws, Living Roots. They play very reactively and just wait until you know the right time to play that big thing in order to finish out a game. So, Rogue and Shaman. Uh, Rogue can be both as well, and same with Shaman. It depends on the draft, and I think um, Rogue is probably the most um, flexible in which how you play it. You can take the board uh, very quickly at the start because Rogue has a lot of very uh, floody cards like uh, Device Ringleader, Buccaneer, uh, your Hero Power synergizes as well with uh, you know Goblin Autobar which gains you the board since you know you're developing not only a 3-2 for 2 mana which is normal but also you know uh, an extra 2 damage from the Goblin Autobarber uh, Battlecry buff and whatnot, and you have a lot of cards like that, SA7, that just swarm the board, but at the same time, you have a lot of cards like uh, Blade Flurry, you have weapons, and you can play very reactively, and you have a lot of removal, you have backstabs, eviscerates, and you can play very reactively. So why is this important? Why, why won't 
Why am I stuck talking still? Um, depending on whether you're playing a momentum class or a reactor class, card values change. So what I mean by this is cards, especially buffs, and I want you to keep your eye open for this one because I see a lot of, uh, I actually do a lot of coaching or did a lot of coaching but I saw this mistake very often and you do not want to value Shattered Sun. Generally a very good card, right? Generally a very good card but playing a momentum class is much much better because you're gonna have the board early and that's, you know, the definition of momentum class is you're building momentum, you know. You're building momentum and this is one of the ways you do it. Shattered Sun is going to make you able to get a good trade and um, get ahead at some point, right? Um, just by timing or like planning uh, the Shattered Sun correctly. But on the other hand, if you're playing a reactive class like, uh, like uh, Mage or Druid or Priest or, you know, sometimes uh, Warrior or Wolf Warrior, then it's a little bit less good because if you're trying to react to something and you don't expect to have the board, Shattered Sun very often will be a t three mana two drop. It'll be a three mana three two, and that's it. And you don't want that to happen. So the value of cards like Shattered Sun, Dark Iron Dwarf, Dark Iron Dwarf, Dark Iron Dwarf, you know, Abusive Sergeant, you know, Defender of Argus this is a big one. Defender of Argus, Defender of Argus, you know, all these change and are a little bit worse, marginally worse, some cards more than others in these reactive classes and are marginally better in the momentum classes. And this is also subject to uh, your own personal playstyle. Maybe your style of mage is more aggressive uh, generally and I'm not saying that you can only have one style but you know looking at the deck right and we're not uh, Sometimes, let's say that we have a reactive paladin deck, sure, let's go with that. Um, generally a very momentum heavy class, but if you have a very reactive paladin, maybe knowing that um, towards the end of your draft, you get offered a Shattered Sun, you think, hey, like, even though I'm paladin and Shattered Sun is generally really good in paladin, because of this deck has so much removal and uh, just comeback tools and doesn't really grab the board immediately at the start, Maybe I would rather, you know, take that, uh, what is something comparable here? Maybe I'd rather, maybe I'd rather, I'd rather take that format at 3-5 over Shattered Sun, which normally, you know, that'd be crazy, right? Because Shattered Sun's so much better than a format at 3-5. So that's just something that you should keep your eye open for as an intermediate player. And this is like the next level beyond going uh, just through a tier list and being like, hey, like this card is so much higher rated, but you gotta see and understand whether this card fits your deck. Fits your deck, not your class, fits your deck. And I'm just giving, uh, and me talking about the momentum slash uh, reactive classes is more of a, you know, um, just generally what they tend to be. Um, so besides buffs, why why else does this matter, Ratsma? Why else does this matter? Good question, Ratsma. Um, so things like uh, mad bombers. Okay. So we talked about what's good in react in uh, momentum classes, which is shattered sun, defender of Argus, uh, abusive dark iron dwarf buffs, right? Um, what's better in um, reactive classes, right? Things like mad bomber. You know, you don't have a board. You don't have a board, you can mad bomber, right? And it does it's not gonna hurt you because you don't have the board and you don't expect to have the board because you're playing a reactive class. It makes this card a two mana three two with purely an upside. And same with the five mana five four, mana bomber to a more or lesser extent. Uh, it depends on how good you can plan out your turns with mana bomber. because um, if you're expecting to kill like some one minion with like five health, then you know, forget it. But if you can kinda like plan it out and kind of bait your opponent into like uh, spreading fantastic you know it's it's, it's really good um, same with things like uh, stampeding kodo maybe a little bit worse in in a in a re um, in a momentum class right stamping kodo or MC tech uh, and there's another big one BGH blood Knight those are the big four I'd say uh, those are a little bit worse in 
momentum classes because very often as a momentum class you got to keep pro keep producing on the board you got to keep developing or else once you lose that momentum you know boom you got you got cleared or you know your opponent gained the board back or stabilized you're done you're done so you want to make sure that you know you're not taking that stat discount uh, for nothing on like MC Tech for example. You don't want a three minute three three if you are playing a momentum class. Like when are you ever going to use that? And, um, when you expect to have the board, you know. And if you already lost the board, then you lost the game. It wouldn't matter if you hit MC Tech unless it's the god MC Tech, which does happen. But please don't play like that. Please don't play like that. So you. Um, Think about it, and those cards get a little bit worse in momentum classes, and much better in reactive classes where you're just looking for an opening, right? As a mage, you're just looking for that perfect flame strike. Maybe you're looking for that perfect blood knight. Maybe you're looking for that perfect uh, MC tech, and it's much better in classes like uh, like that. Um, another thing to think about is something like Youthful Brew and Ancient Brewmaster, um, much worse in momentum class. Uh, I did have a bunch, a big list written down. It's not just not very organized, but you know, I, I don't have to tell you why it's bad. Uh, I'm assuming in a momentum class because you don't really want to uh, s set your momentum back. You know, momentum goes forward, not backwards. You know, if it went both ways, then it really wouldn't be momentum. It would just be, you know, yeah, poop, poop. I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't be anything. I actually have a little. I have a deck here that I found on Reddit. Um, and uh, so this guy posted this deck and he was really happy about it and it's not a bad deck it's not a bad deck but I think he was a little bit more excited about the deck and he thought it was a little bit more powerful than it probably is and I'm gonna tell you why so I see a huge problem here um, I see a lot of ones which is good you know uh, and I'm not even gonna talk about the uh, power level of flame imp um, yeah it has gone down a little bit but uh, that's not the main point here. The main point here is that he doesn't have very many pl plays on three. And we talked about things like Argent Horse Rider um, supporting uh, supporting two threes much better. But most of what he has, he has a three two. He has two four threes. Succubus is a little bit less playable. Um, but he has Wrath Guard. He has a bunch of three twos. If we count the Flame Mimps as two drops, especially with Shattered Sun, usually uh, the uh, the Flame Imp will trade one for one with a lot of three drops and even half the two drops. Shattered Sun's not going to end up buffing up Flame Imp. So you're missing out on a lot of synergy um, as opposed to like if these Flame Imps were all like two, three River Crocs, then you know the Shattered Sun buff would most likely go off a lot more often, right? And we have, uh, sorry, I'll zoom in a little bit here. And we have two Shattered Suns, and you know that's half your three drops, you know. Um, but that's just something I wanted to uh, mention. You gotta really look and be like, hey, do I, um, is it, like, do I have, and this goes, this is less towards like, uh, have, like uh, you determining whether you have a momentum class or a reactionary class. Uh, this is more towards, uh, uh, what did I call it, stat allocation synergy, I believe. Whew. Um, like you don't have good stat allocation synergy with the Shattered Sun Cleric and the three twos is what I'm trying to get at. So it's a little bit less good, and you'd probably be better off with three mana three threes even. Um, but obviously, like things like Harvest Golem or Sp Spider Tank, I have no idea how he drafted this. Uh, this is just an analysis post draft. So maybe he drafted the Shattered Suns at the very start and had no option. Um, or no clue that he would end up with a deck with a bunch of 3-2s, but it's just something to keep in mind. It's just something to keep in mind. And that's why I uh, saved that picture. And uh, let's talk about uh, uh, spells and minions working together to do one thing. So, I'm going to change up this deck just a little bit. Just to uh, make a point here. I'm gonna add a bunch of early game and have this be in a, a very, very, you know, aggressive looking deck, okay? There we go, that's pretty aggressive. I don't have all the cards, but. Alright. <clears throat> so, this is a very uh, easy tip for you uh, intermediate players out there. Uh, and if you want to like uh, 
if you're not sure and you're stuck between two spells or you know you just want to know kind of like how uh, the spells synergize with your minions because uh, we talked about minion to minion synergy uh, just with stats now we're going to talk about spell to minion synergy uh, according to curve so given this curve right you have a very aggressive curve lots of two drops lots of three drops lots of four drops this happens you know it's not ideal but it happens so you know you have an aggressive mage deck so what kind of spells do you want you want actually less frost bolts and flame cannons and you want more high impact spells you want high impact spells obviously you can't always get uh, like your flame strikes but you know if you get like a power blast offering maybe that's more that makes sense you know you have the board early and what you need is a finisher and you can get that from your spells um, and the other way around is true as well so if you have a lot of uh, early game or if you have a lot of late game sorry I'm just gonna put cards in here just so we can look at the curve um, And this usually this is usually the case in like uh, in like Druid, okay? You see this a lot in Druid, where you're just stacked up with late game, and maybe you have a sick late game, right? But the problem is getting to the late game. What do you need with uh, like a heavy minion curve? Like you have really heavy minions that get you a lot of value. You need to survive. That's number one. So what you're looking for is you know cheap spells. You're looking for your flame cannons, your frost bolts. If you're a druid, you're looking for, you know, maybe not that much uh, swipe, but you're looking for more wrath. That's what you need more than swipe. Um, this also works better because if you're playing like an iron bark, you can't iron bark and swipe, um, but you can like iron bark and wrath. And generally you want to do multiple things with your single turn. That way, you know, if you're your, um, your play gets countered, it's not completely countered since you have two parts to your play. And uh, but yeah, like why why is this though? Why why with like a really aggressive minion curve early on, do we want like high impact late game spells? And why with a really expensive uh, minion curve, do we want like really cheap spells? Uh, I think the best way to think about this is you know cheap spells help help you stay alive until you stabilize with the big minion, right? Once you get the big minion on board with the help of the spell, the big minion will start doing its job by clearing off board and protecting your face. But uh, the other way around, um, when you have a really low curve, expensive help spells with uh, really high impact will be that final push to end the game, whether it be a value crusher like Flame Strike, which isn't uh, face damage, but you know just completely uh, clears the board and allows you to push for more face damage, or whether it be, or it be like power blasts and um, power blasts and fireballs, which help you actually finish the game with damage because of your early curve and your likeliness to uh, have already done a lot of face damage because of uh, your low curve. It tends to work out that way, so that's a good thing to keep in mind and very easy thing to remember is you know if you have a very low curve with a lot of low curve minions, then you want expensive expensive spells and if you have uh, a very high curve with your minions and you want very cheap cheap spells and I'm not talking like uh, mid-game spells like uh, uh, once again I'll yeah, I'm not talking like things like Holy Nova as much as I'm talking things like Holy Smite and Shadow Word Pain things to keep you alive in the early game since with the expensive curve generally your curve will start to start um, getting powerful during like the turn 4, or turn 5, maybe even turn 3 and that's when you'll start stabilize, stabilizing with minions so you know this is why oftentimes wrath is better, much better than swipe in an expensive druid deck so but uh, yeah that's all I have for intermediate tips um, we will definitely be uh, following this up with uh, intermediate uh, play tips so now that we're done with the draft portion we move on to you know how how you should uh, see your games as an intermediate player and uh, yeah next after that it's just advanced tips and that'll be the uh, final two videos or final three videos the intermediate part two and then the advanced part one and part two but uh, hope you guys enjoyed that if you did uh, give it a like I guess <laughs> Just sounds like something I should say. Thank you very much for watching again, and uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash ratsma.